Hi and welcome back, lovely people. Occasionally, we all come across something that is so good <laughs> that you have to share it. So I am a filmmaker who's worked in science all his life. You have to watch this. I was looking for some more amateur satellite images to share with you to make another film about looking at satellites from your backyard. When I came across this, it's a short Canadian film about a guy in British Columbia who is an amateur astronomer who discovered a lost NASA satellite. I'm just going to share it with you today. It's not monetized or anything. I mean, it's theirs. Please look in the description for a link to their channel. As a piece of humanity, as a piece of filmmaking, and as a piece of science that encourages young people to go out and do things, this is top work. Sit back and enjoy this. When I was looking for objects in space, I found something completely unexpected. Last month, a signal led to the discovery of a satellite that NASA thought was gone forever. In the background, every day, there are, are people going through their normal routines that don't work for space programs that understand why there's a good reason to look up. I'm an amateur astronomer. It's kind of like a sport, right? It's like train spotting. Because when you look into space and you see something, you don't know what it is. It can be as something as simple as debris, or it can go to the other extreme, military satellites in Earth orbit. But if it's in orbit, it can be observed. You just need some time and understanding, and you need a whole lot of patience. My day job, I focus mostly on electronics and electrical work. I focus on boats now in my career. Boats are like satellites because they have a lot of similar things on board. You know, they've got batteries, solar panels, navigation systems, computers. Satellites are the same thing, except they're not floating on water, they're floating in space. Outside here, we've got the S-band antennas. And up here on the roof, we've got the S-band tracking dish, quite sufficient for hearing things so about a million miles in space. From the images that I obtain, I can take positional observations and time and location in the sky and use that to make very accurate orbital predictions of the object. It's obviously quite an abstract hobby. The general interest in satellite tracking by amateurs started with the first satellite, Sputnik 1. The military really didn't know what to do. They really didn't have an infrastructure to track objects in Earth orbit. So it fell upon amateurs. As the Cold War developed and got more intensified, lots more stuff is ending up in space. And there was this question, what are you launching? What are you doing? How do we know for sure that you're not putting nuclear weapons up there? That can create anxiety. So that kind of reinvigorated the amateur satellite tracking community because there's now hundreds of objects to track that are not tracked publicly. You're looking for objects in space and trying to catalog them for what they are and identify them to the mission that they belong to. That's generally what I do. So we're searching for this satellite called Zuma. Zuma was a classified launch in early January 2018. There was no way to search for it visually at the time. So I started a radio search. And I noticed a Doppler curve that I didn't have cataloged. But I immediately knew it wasn't Zuma. The shape of the Doppler curve told me it was in high Earth orbit. I started studying the signal a little bit further and found something completely unexpected. It came back as 26113. Image. Image was kind of satellite rock star in its day according to NASA itself, was the second most important science-generating mission in the early 2000s. What tweaked me was reading a web page that basically said image had failed in 2005, and contact was lost with it. It just switched itself off and had no way of turning itself back on again. Once I realized what it was, at first I thought to myself, who's gonna listen to a guy like me, you know, that lives in the forest somewhere, that doesn't work in the industry, I just documented my process, my observations. Afterwards, I was able to identify the principal investigator. I found his email address, and I sent him a very basic note. Hey, Dr. Birch, I believe your satellite's talking again. 
I woke up in the morning to a chorus of emails from Dr. Birch, NASA engineers, former mission scientists, all very excited about the possibility of image being returned to them. An amateur astronomer in BC has made a discovery that has gained NASA's attention. It kind of made me feel like all the effort that I've been doing over the years had somehow been validated. I don't receive any remuneration for what I do. In my mind, that is the definition of an amateur. There's always a lot to learn, and that's why I do it. You're being motivated by the spiritual paycheck you get out of doing it. And what I've discovered is it's not so much about looking up anymore, it's about sharing that experience. I feel space, it's a place where people may go someday, people may live. Space can be utilized in a fair, safe, understandable way. And I think that's really the most important thing.